Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to PBTV. So I've brought something um, that we've not spoken about for a long time, and this was going to be a, a sort of chat about various different platforms from uh, the full auto choice, uh, like assault weapons or things like that, to DMRs and snipers. But I built this thing up and thought we'd just do a dedicated one on this for now and leave the uh, the platform one um, for another time. So this is the CM057A from Cyma, uh, one of the SVDs. There's a couple of different ones around different brands uh, that do various different things. But I think this is probably one of the ones that's closest to a DMR out the box with a few tweaks. And I've also put the PSO on there just to um, add to the look because... Without an SVD without this scope on it isn't really an SVD, is it? So if you do have any questions, by all means, drop them down below. We'll flash them up on screen and try and answer them as quickly as we can. But uh, apart from that, I'm going to start the front and work my way back. Uh, and again, any questions, I'm going to try and keep it all in screen for as long as I can. But this thing is probably the, the longest rifle we have had on stream. Uh, so if I do start banging it against things or it starts going out of shot, I do apologize. Um, First things first, on the front, the flash hider does not unscrew or anything like that. There's no thread underneath it. Uh, underneath the front end, about where my finger is, there is a grub screw. If you undo that, it slides off, and then you just have the outer barrel. There's no 40 mil thread. There's no nothing underneath there. So if you are wanting to put a device on the front, it will have to be sort of uh, worked on by a tech or something like that. So you are kind of stuck with the flash hider out the box, uh, but also that is where the front pin sight is. So if you are wanting to put like a, um, a PBS4 or something on here, you will need a... Um, uh, a thread putting on there by a tech. Apart from that, it is simply grub screwed in place. Coming back, we do have a metal outer barrel into a metal gas block into a polymer front grip. As you can see, this is the polymer version, so the all black version, so there's no uh, wood on this apart from a very small part on the cheek rest at the back, but there obviously are two different versions of the SVD, so this is the all black polymer variant, and then there is the real or the fake wood where the um, uh, grip at the front here and the stock would be uh, wood or fake wood. The stock at the front, sorry, the grip at the front is also where the battery is housed. Um, so just there's a little lever here. Up, uh, moving that lever opens up the uh, grip at the front and you have this entire battery space, obviously minding the barrel in the middle, you have this entire battery space for uh, batteries. Again, nunchucks, stick batteries, anything like that, stick to 74 um, 8.4, maybe even a 9.6 if you can fit NIM ones in here. You're probably going to stick to LiPo's because you have thinner batteries uh, and be able to put one maybe either side of the barrel. But you do have quite a substantial amount of barrel space in there. So um, the, the best ones that fit are going to be nunchucks. It is a Tamiya connector in there. So if you are wanting to swap it out to Dean's or you've got different batteries, just be aware of that. It is a Tamiya battery connector. We do have the uh, second part of the um, iron sights. So the leaf sight is back here. So this is actually your rear sight uh, and your front sights uh, up here. But again, this is a, a, a sort of DMR platform. So you're probably going to stick with something magnified. Uh, so coming back a little bit further, we do have the stamped steel um, receiver and upper receiver and all the different parts. So they've tried to build this in uh, as much in keeping with the real steel variant. So the upper receiver is that stamped relatively thin compared to like your normal receivers on ARs and things like that doesn't mean it's any weaker it's just how it's been produced uh, Reaper on uh, YouTube is she balanced um, I can't really say this thing is balanced purely because of the size of it and the scope that I've added so you have a massive chunk of weight back here but there's not much at the front so when this thing's shouldered it is actually okay but you've got 90% of the weight sat at the back here pretty much where it's going to be shouldered the scope does add a massive amount of weight so without the scope on it this thing is three and a half ish kilos unloaded so that's without any bbs no scope no nothing you're looking at three and a half kilos then you throw the pso on there and you're adding probably a, another kilo maybe onto that so it does, it does kind of add up. There is a, a chunk of weight to be carrying around, but this type of platform, you're kind of hopefully not moving around too much. You're going to find a static position and just start um, picking people off from a little bit of a distance. Obviously, saying it's a DMR out the box, um, it is a semi orderly platform, is the Sima. Various other ones, uh, like the a &K has full auto, but the Sima, the, the 057, is semi auto only out the box but it is only 324 fps out of the box so 
Again, it's something you're going to have to look at. It does mean that you will have no medium engagement distance with this out the box, so you can just use it as a very sort of sneaky platform. You don't have to go for that DMR roll or um, sort of chase it out the box. But again, a spring change, it is already semi-auto, and that is the biggest um, sort of crux to try and overcome when it is trying to find a DMR out the box. It is something that is locked to semi. Uh, Delta Hotel, uh, nice, what's the e? FPS? So yes, uh, just saying there, it is 324 out the box. Um, so if you are wanting to go true DMR, you will have to do a spring change or anything like that. But the bonus is that this is pre-locked to semi-auto. You're not gonna have to do anything else. Um, so the Simon one is locked to semi-auto. Other ones will have a full auto version on it. Um, but I do think it's quite cool that this is already locked to semi-auto. Uh, Paul, 1979 on YouTube. What's the effective range? Absolutely no idea. Uh, to be honest, range is something that we cannot calculate or give a value on. Uh, when it comes to chronoing, we can put it through the chronographer, uh, get a number and, and tell you what it is. When it comes to range, there are far too many variables that um, need to be taken into account. Uh, wind, weather, everything like that, what BB weight you're using, how much hop you've applied, everything like that. Um, it is not something that we can put a sort of overall figure on. And for us to go uh, tech every platform out and test uh, range on them would take a hell of a long time. So unfortunately, range is not something we can properly calculate. But it is. it does have a, a very, very nice uh, 690 millimeter in a barrel. Uh, so it is going to be very, very accurate out to whatever range you can get it to go to. Uh, again, with it having probably a very, very good air seal with it being the semi-auto version, um, you, you're gonna, you are going to reach out a little bit, probably a little bit more than a standard AEG that's got like a 200mm or a 300mm barrel, but you start creeping up and go for that 400 FPS with such a long barrel, it is, uh, is going to reach out, but we physically can't put a number to that, unfortunately. Uh, quick chain spring. Uh, or a lot of fiddling. Uh, it will not be a quick change spring because of the way that the stock and everything on an SVD is. It is a version three gearbox, but it will be a gearbox out uh, job to do a spring change. Um, if you know what you're doing, that's totally fine, but obviously we always advise uh, things like that are done by professional tech, uh, just so you know that when it is put back together, it is put back together properly. Because um, obviously when you're chasing the higher numbers and everything like that, you're gonna uh, put the weaker link down down the chain and uh, you just generally need to know what you're doing. Again, with things like this, you it gives you the opportunity to trick it out if you want. It is a standard version three gearbox inside. So again, most MOSFETs and uh, things like that will fit. So you could even put a, a gate Titan in this thing if you wanted to. So you could have pre-cocking. You could then even go sniper trigger delay so that you could actually uh, increase this up to a true sniper profile. So if you are wanting to do 500 FPS and put a trigger sort of delay in it where you've got a one and a half second, two second delay and you can't, fire it uh, in between that we do allow that at our site as long as it is set up properly and you know what you're doing that is totally fine it allows you to creep a little bit further with the power so coming on to some other bits a 120 round magazine on this so again really really good for um a dimmer or a sniper style platform you've got plenty of rounds in there there's a lot of vsrs and stuff like that that are kind of around the 30 round mark there's some that have started doing 100 round plus mags or some people just get the m4 mag adapters um and, and run it like that control wise so there are two um slight uh, sort of controls on the right hand side that you don't normally expect on an ak style platform the one at the back here is actually the safety so when that's down it does lock the trigger out completely uh, and then you have another safety with the um, standard version and then you drop it down and go into semi-auto so it is slightly again most ak's right-handed dominant because you're going to have that bolt flying backwards on the real steel one so you don't want to be um locking your cheek on there on a on the left hand side on a real version again same with ak's mag release straight behind the uh, magazine so you push it forward rolls out exactly the same as an ak and you can lock it back in the stock itself a single piece of uh, polymer at the back obviously the other versions there are wood versions and everything like that so you can get wood variants but this is the all black plastic version and then you do have a it is wood and it does have leather on it there's not much cushioning on that it is purely there to give you a cheap riser to get a decent um, eye relief on the optic so the pso1 uh, that i've put on this obviously not included with the um 
the 57 it is a separate item but it is a 4x24 uh, scope it is locked to four times there's no zoom uh, option on this and what we mean by 24 is the um, external sort of diameter of the tube on the um, objective lens is 24 mil uh, again the front end does slightly uh, adjust when it comes to uh, the sort of sunshade so this is purely if you want to put this forward just gives you a little bit more protection from sun coming down and giving you glare and uh, things like that again very very good optic um, pretty much the one that you're going to go for with the SVD simply clamps onto the side onto the AK specific mounting there is a switch just here so it is uh, illuminated as well it's quite bright inside so it's going to be really, really good on sort of bright uh, sunny days if it gets quite dim and dark I think this uh, luminate uh, the loom on this might be a little bit too much uh, and be a bit overpowering so I'd stick to the uh, standard crosshairs on there it does have all the mill dots and everything like that to make it as close to the real steel as possible but as much as you're going to use them in airsoft uh, we don't really know windage and elevation adjustment is completely toolless so you can just simply adjust it on the fly if you need to and again it is a qd style optic as well so simply pulling the lever on the side slide it off the back and you can take it off uh, if you want to put some marks on it or anything like that that will allow you to take it off slide it back on again this is a very very large platform uh, we do have para cases that would fit this quite comfortable but if you are wanting to take the optic off and keep that separate it is just one thing that you'll uh, you just need to uh, think about when you're transporting this thing again it is quite easy to take on and off it is qd so it does give you a very good option uh, out the box the gator at the back is not on so you do have to fit that yourself and uh, obviously at the back you uh, you do have the eye relief uh, adjuster as well so as i was saying there's no um zoom on this there's no um adjustment the only one you have is the sort of eye relief at the back the windage the elevation the illumination and the battery is included which is always a bonus it does have a little protective cap so when you do pack this thing away and this is all the way back you can simply put that on keeps it nice and protected and stops the um uh, the anti-glare thing rattling around uh, but yeah so three and a half kilos it is going to be quite heavy adding another kilo for the pso you are going to know about it but the type of platform this is you you're pretty much going to be sat hiding in a bush uh, and taking shots at a distance uh, it is oh, so it's 122 centimeters long so again it is big so if you are looking for a case or anything there are plenty of para cases that will fit this thing um just so it is uh, rather than rifle bags or anything like that you're going to struggle because uh, it doesn't fold away the stock is fixed the barrel is fixed so everything is fixed in place there's no adjustment on it um as i was saying earlier this is the uh, only one that i know that we have that is locked to semi-auto so you've got safe and semi uh the a and k one and various other ones have full auto on them so so this is probably the best option when it comes to DMR out the box. Uh, it just stops uh, having to do any other uh, options. It does have a gear style hop behind the uh, charging handle. You can get to the hop quite easy on that. Um, quite a light spring as well. So it's easy to hold back uh, and adjust that on the fly. Even if you are sort of gillied up in a bush, you could probably quite easily do that mid fight and have no problems with it. Uh, how many sling uh, mounts does she have? Uh, there's a couple. So normally with this kind of platform, you are going to be two point um, slinging it if you're going to sling it at all. Because again, you, you're going to be sort of hidden away uh, and moving quite stealthily. But you have a ring at the front here, just on the left hand side of the gas block. And actually this bar in the back of the stock is also one of the sling points. So you, your pretty much choice is two point. The standard sort of AK style sling will uh, clip onto this very nice and easily. Uh, it's like a canvas and leather style sling point. Um, personally, if I was running this, I probably wouldn't sling it um, because the, the type of movement you're going to be up, up, down, sort of crawling through bushes and everything like that. Uh, throwing a sling on this is only going to sort of restrict you slightly. Uh, you're going to want to get free movement with this. The size of it, you're going to have to pass it through... Um, any gaps that you can get if you've got this slung it's going to be stuck to your body a little bit too much so i think running this thing without a sling would probably be better uh, and you can have a little bit more maneuverability with it uh, so as i said uh, there is no um thread on the front of this uh, taking the flash hider off just reveals the uh, blank outer barrel so if you are wanting to put a device on this it will have to go to a tech uh, and get threaded there's nothing uh, underneath the the grub screw on the front that's just under there the flash adder slides off uh, and it is simply locked on by a grub screw but you do have a 690 millimeter in a barrel so i do believe that that is the biggest 
uh, barrel on pretty much any airsoft, especially electric um, AEG. So when it comes down to efficiency um, with pistons and everything like that, just be aware that if you start chasing a tight bore, uh, speak to a tech about your um, cylinder volume because if you've got more um, more air in the barrel than there is in the cylinder, you're going to uh, start getting a, a little bit of vacuum and it's going to be detrimental to your shots. Uh, again, with it being the semi-auto one, uh, and not having to chase that uh, the, like full auto on big long barrels you're going to have a lot of fps drop but because this is the semi-auto version i think it's going to be absolutely excellent uh, and i think people are going to love this on a field and it is an absolute classic of a platform every time i uh, get one of these out and put one of these scopes on it i just think they're uh, an absolutely awesome build uh, and they uh, have a bit of a menacing look as well uh, but again, you can you you can trick this up because it is a standard version three in there. You can start throwing um, MOSFETs in there, so a gate Titan will fit. So you can have your precock in. You'll be able to have the the digital trigger, etc. You can change your um, uh, trigger pressure and have this built exactly how you want and make it absolutely incredible. But very excited for people to get their hands on these. Um, but yeah, so this is the Cyma 057A. Uh, there's various other brands and things like that and it is the ACM PSO one on top of it uh, But yeah, if you definitely fancy an SVD build this is uh, probably my uh, go-to choice because I think it looks absolutely stunning So if that's everything for today, thank you much. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, Appreciate the questions. It always makes my life a lot easier, but we are obviously away for the weekend now We'll be back again on Monday for another standard live stream as always, if you like the content we're doing, please drop us a subscription on YouTube, drop us a comment, a like, anything like that. It is seriously appreciated. But if that's everything for today, I'll catch you in a bit. Bye.